Are you having doubts about becoming a full-time creator? Maybe you don't think you have the amount of time that it takes to keep up, or you're just unsure that it's even gonna happen with the infinity of creators out there. As somebody who's been a full-time creator for over a decade, here's some things that you probably haven't even thought about. Now me as a full-time creator, would I give this up and go back to working a traditional job knowing what I know now? F no. <laughs> I'm conditioned for this at this point, but let me take you back to where it started. This was my first ever job. I folded clothes in here and I worked in a dressing room where I would let my friends come in and steal from time to time. I hated this job. I would come in for four hours pretty much every single night and have to close the store down and clean up every single thing that the full-time workers didn't do throughout the whole day. So I was getting paid the least amount of money and having to do the most amount of work. I got fired from here for skipping work to go buy some Jordans. I'd say it was worth it. This right here is my second job. I used to push carts in 100 degree weather and listen to the car to throw on my iPod touch. Life was good, honestly. I got paid weekly, and again, I would spend all my money on Jordans. This is where I truly found out I don't actually enjoy talking to people. I love this job. This sketchy building right here with no logos was my last and final job. I used to work in the basement, filing papers for the census. This job was cool. The pay was good, and I didn't have to talk to any customers, but the only thing was, I had to work overnight, so I was legit becoming an insomniac. Now, why am I telling you this? Why is this significant? Well, regardless if I hated the job or I loved the job, one thing was for certain. On the exact same day, weekly or bi-weekly, I knew for a fact I was getting paid. And as a content creator, it's not like that. As a full-time creator, you no longer have financial certainty. Like, you can sign in the contracts, but it's still really no guarantee of when or if you'll even get paid. Like I make great money, but I still deal with late payments from brands and I've had clients duck me for years before I got into YouTube. I've even had situations where I've had rent due and I didn't get paid. As somebody who has a family to take care of, I 100% respect anybody who takes the peace of mind of an on-time check over the volatile creator life. It's absolutely nothing wrong with having a traditional job. And anybody who tells you otherwise, it's flat out wild. The concept of being a street performer is wild when you think about it. You set up in the most populated area, pull out your best dance moves and tools, and deal with the adversity of people walking right past you without even looking at you. I mean, you go absolutely crazy. Your best dance moves, your best songs for hours. And if nobody stops to even give you a listen, drops no money in your pot, you have no money to eat for the night. It's crazy, right? Well, this is basically what being a full-time content creator is. Your finances are tied to something that you can't control. And when you think about it, that's crazy. I can do market research to see what people might be interested in watching, but I cannot make you engage in my content. And when that's directly tied to how I eat at night, that's insanity. Are you really ready for that type of life? And then the deeper you get into this, the wilder it gets as well. You playing psychologist, trying to see what people are into. Then you trying to tip the odds in your favor with a catchy title and thumbnail. Then you trying to reel them in with a hook at the beginning of the video. It gets crazy, man. A lot of people don't think about this. They get an unhealthy obsession with views because views do equate to money to an extent. They rely on views for money, and then they become stuck. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh my God, that was crazy. I gotta leave that in the video. <laughs> Whether you plan on doing this full time or not, I highly recommend that you do not 100% rely on viewership for money. It's not the play. Diversify your income with products or services or both, but don't get to a point where you 100% rely on viewership. It's not the move, it's a game, and it's a crazy one. It's nothing like clocking out. You looking at the clock, watching it wind down in 15 minute increments, fantasizing about exactly what you're gonna do when you walk through them double doors. Radio silence for my job for the next two days. I'm off, don't call me, don't text me, don't contact me about nothing. The weekend is here. That's one of the things that I do really envy about leaving the workforce. When you off, you off. And as a content creator, you're never really off. You're really just constantly thinking about creative ideas even when it's unintentional. Like you could be sitting down at the dinner table having dinner and a genius idea pop up and you'd be like, oh damn, I gotta write that down. Or you running on a treadmill and the idea pops up in your mind, you like, yo, that right there, 
that's the one. Or you just trying to relax. You chilling watching a TV show and you see a crazy shot in a TV show and think, yo, if I recreate this shot, it will go crazy in an Instagram reel. And aside from content being mentally draining, the new pace of content is extremely fast. It's super fast. And you either create for it 24 7 to avoid irrelevancy or you just become okay with the analytical graph flattening out a little bit if you don't think about this stuff it quickly becomes a rat race and i don't knock anybody who does grind all the time and put out hella content because at some point it's your time and it's your time to put that work in to make the graph go up but you are gonna have to relax eventually you can't sprint forever this is why you don't see me constantly online uploading tweeting instagram reeling it's because i just don't really want to get into the rat race i'm making something i like it when it's done it's done what happens in between that little section is uh it's cool i'm okay with it i'm totally fine with that Extraordinary benefits accrue to the tiny minority of people who are able to push just a tiny bit longer than most. Extraordinary benefits also accrue to the tiny majority with the guts to quit early and refocus their efforts on something new. In both cases, it's about being the best in the world, about getting through the hard stuff and coming out on the other side. We good, we good. Okay, is the autofocus catching me? I think we good. Apologies in advance if the audio's butchered at all. Might be windy, but I'm running out of time here. I gotta get this done. That right there was an excerpt from the audio book, The Dip by Seth Golden. An, an incredible listen that talks about knowing when to quit something or knowing when to stick it out to reap the benefits of doing something that nobody else is willing to do. <sighs> It's nothing wrong with doing this part-time. Honestly, for me, it's admirable for you to be able to make a decision based on your own personal circumstances and stick to that, despite every influence out there in the world gloating the lifestyle. But what I will say is that it's definitely something to be desired about being a full-time content creator. I think that it is a lot sexier than it sounds, especially for me. I don't travel to Italy every single day. I don't live in Bali. I'm not a nomadic creator who just goes to coffee shops in Bali every day and, uh, you know, work from a laptop. But for me, my life looks like me picking up my sons every day from school or being able to sleep in or being able to sit on the couch and watch a movie with my wife. And to me, that's important. You know, you gotta understand where I come from. My mom worked so much when I was younger that she was not able to come to any of my basketball games. My mom never took me to school unless she had to. If my mom had to go to that school for anything, she was not happy about it. So for me, it means the world to me that I can show up for my sons every single time that they have an event and not feel guilty about it and I have to skip out on work and I have to ask if I can call out for the day. To me, that's what it's about, man. But it's all up to you to set up your life exactly how you want it. The grass is always a little bit greener on the other side. It's up to you, man. Make the decision. Now, I do have a behind the scenes breakdown of this video to show you guys how I got some of the shots in it. Before I get into it, though, I want to tell you guys about my go to place for all stock media assets. If you guys are looking for motion backgrounds, motion templates, motion titles, stock video clips, stock audio, stock images, Storyblocks is the place to do it. And I love Storyblocks because with an unlimited plan, you can download and access every single one of these assets and use as many as you want in whatever project you want because these are all royalty free. Throughout this video, you guys have been seeing this really cool film burn animation to get me from scene to scene. And also this animated title throughout the video to emphasize certain parts of my script. And I got all of these from Storyblocks. The cool thing about Storyblocks is that they have motion templates available for pretty much any editing platform out there. Final Cut Pro 10, Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, you name it, they got you covered. If you guys are interested in being able to access all of these different stock media assets at one affordable price per month, it's going to be a link down in the description for you guys to check out storyblocks.com. Make sure you guys do. Unlimited plan, you guys will not be disappointed. I love this spot. This is my go-to. Let's get into this behind the scenes. It's brick, but we starting and I'm excited about that. This cold right here is like 
very very uninspiring to me right now so what i'm gonna do to get this video started is just pop some shots off in the car man car is easy i can keep the heat on get some motivation and then we'll eventually slide to the more unbearable conditions of being outdoors but it's cool set up the r5c right now we'll talk a little bit more about the gear once we hop into the car but let's get all this stuff put together man and uh hop into this video all right so back to what i was saying i've been extremely unmotivated because of nothing else but the weather but the car is a hack and also just shooting something that's easy to get into the rhythm of shooting and actually enjoying it to make me want to go shoot some better stuff okay so i got the r5c back there and on it i have the sigma 24 millimeter f1.4 one of my favorite all around lenses has a great aperture range to get some nice depth of field and it's pretty wide then i got my travel tripod right there just propping it up on the ground and on the seat it's not gonna fall and that's it super simple shot but the seats give the shot a nice foreground element it's layered we got the background mid ground it's a nice shot now one hack if you're going to be shooting the car is to open up your sunroof <laughs> it gives you a nice skylight inside of the car it's a nice gray day so everything is nice and evenly lit but this skylight right here is making it seem like i got a light over here it looks really nice so i'm gonna run through this and shoot some stuff i'm using the uh the hollyland lock <laughs> i'm using the hollyland lark max uh wireless microphones um and that's that let's get it in my previous video one thing that uh a lot of people were asking about was my scripts like how do i write scripts how do i remember what i'm supposed to say with my videos basically when i do write my scripts i just use my notes phone on my app and then i'll separate it out into like a paragraph basis and then when it's time for me to hop on camera i can summarize that basis so it doesn't feel like it's being read off of a script um but sometimes if i know that i need to read very specific things like maybe it's the specs of a camera or the specs of a light I will read those things off of my phone and then I'll just throw B-roll over top of that so I actually know what I'm talking about. But it's really just as simple as that. It's nothing over the top, it's nothing crazy. Oh, and the autofocus is catching me. You love to see, oh my gosh, look. All right, so for the next shot we got same tripod same setup everything lens everything but i raised it up it's in the front seat and we're reflecting off the rear view mirror and it's it's looking fire man the car shots can actually be really dope and just opening up the sunroof is giving me nice lighting as well day two filming uh i don't know if y'all can see it but it's it's snowing so my conditions are getting worse and my motivation is going down but we still here and we still gonna kill it so right here right now this is my first job old navy i hated this job so much i hated it so much i was a part-time worker i would come in for four hours and close the store down and everything that the workers did earlier in the day, the full-time workers, I had to clean up after them and basically fix what they didn't do. I just wasn't rocking with it. So we're about to get this opening shot right now to um, go into a little bit of my backstory. Y'all let me know down in the comment section, what was your first job? What was your first job? Did you hate it? Did you love it? This right here let me know that retail uh, retail jobs were not for me. Anything where I had to deal with customers or like, do customer service just was not it at all but i'm about to set up the shop before i get kicked out of the shopping center um yeah let's let's get it let's get it what i'm gonna grab right now is the r5c and also the 24 millimeter f 1.4 sigma art lens love this lens great all-around lens great aperture everything from this pretty much looks good I'm gonna set this up on the travel tripod and grab this shot real quick before I get kicked out. All right, let's do it. One job down though. 
we gotta slide to the next one but i want to holler at y'all real quick <sighs> let's do it yeah i just wanted to say like i'm really enjoying this format it's uh it's fun and i haven't really had a lot of fun making youtube videos lately just because the process of them has been very repetitive you get an idea you write the idea down you sit down in your office you talk through what you've written down perfect key light perfect rembrandt lighting setup perfect aperture perfect looking office then you chop this talking head down and you throw be all over top of it with this format i feel like i'm actually not only keeping a concise topic for the video that i'm creating but i'm also getting to go out and practice cinematography and actually use my camera for what i originally bought it for which was to do cinematography i feel like youtube kind of prevents that at times because you're not only trying to be efficient you're trying to keep things consistent and you're trying to stick to this formulated setup for youtube videos this is just the way everybody does it and another reason why i have been enjoying this format where i'm just going out and you know going through my scripts in different locations with different sorts of nice looking frames is i have behind the scenes so you're getting everything you're getting a concise think piece you're getting behind the scenes you're also getting my actual personality and it's hard for that to shine through just a scripted piece this is one of the reasons why i enjoy vlogging back in the day but uh I like it because I feel like you're getting all elements. You get behind the scenes, you're getting vlogging, you're getting a concise think piece, and you're also getting education. Come on, dog, relax. <laughs> and you're also getting education um, because I'm showing you how I'm doing what I'm doing. And it's not as complex as it might seem just looking at a concise think piece. So, yeah, let me know what y'all think about this format, man, because I'm, I'm loving it. Like I said, it's been a while since I've had fun. I know how to make a fast YouTube video with a talking head and throwing beer all over top of it. This takes a little bit more time. It's a little bit more calculated, but it's a lot more fun. And I'm down for that. Fun is really where it's at, man. I feel like I just missed out on some of the best behind the scenes, but I didn't really have time to get it. It's almost dark. And I honestly didn't even really think I was going to capture anything meaningful. I was like, I'm going to go to the lake, see what happens. But this is just a testament to go out and see what happens. Sometimes the conditions are just perfect like i don't know if y'all can see this but the lake is like it's it's fogged over you got the ducks on the ice like this is it's just all the right circumstances for a perfect shot and if you don't go out and explore and see what happens you never know man i didn't think this was conditions for good shots but i got some r5c 24 millimeter sigma this is very boring on the gear side of things but hopefully this is just inspirational to y'all like just go out and see what happens <laughs> it's not always gonna be perfect but sometimes like this or even in my last video where i went out with my car and got the shots for the video and the fog was just insane stuff just comes together sometimes man you just gotta be prepared for it to happen for you man so ha, <sighs> that's that's my word in this behind the scenes if you don't take nothing from it take this away from it just go out and be prepared because you never know what's gonna happen I think I found some more heat, bro. Exploration, exploration. Y'all probably can't see it. It looks, yo, I don't know. This, this video finna be so moody for no reason at all. This is fire. This spot looks hard. I just gotta figure out how to shoot it. But you see the clouds back there with the little fog, the haze. Oh, come on, bro. Come on, come, come on, bro. Come on, man. The, 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 the cinematography guys is looking out for me right now. I'm telling you. I just got to figure out how to flip it. I'm about to pull it down here. We're going we gonna to figure this out. Walk through y'all. Walk through y'all. And it feels so nice out here right now. It's like 50 degrees. Y'all probably thinking that's cold, but it's been break. But yo, peep this. 
this is did y'all this is crazy this like a music video set right here we got this platform with the fall coming off the top of it bro come on man what more could you ask for bro come on man come on bro this right here is cool we got a we got a little bit of a frame right here we could potentially shoot through i don't know man this is this is fire dog come on bro it's probably muddy as hell Let's see. ah now all over my cdg chucks that's painful that's pain but yo heat this bro come, yo man what is this day three day four i don't know this is just this is some insight on how long videos like this take to shoot as well i could probably shoot this whole video on a day to be honest but trying to sync up with times then the weather has been extremely cold it's been raining it's been a lot it'd be a lot in the way of me shooting these videos i could potentially shoot on way faster but this is it this platform is crazy i think i'm about to shoot a large part of this just me in the middle of this platform from a bunch of different angles this drum just looks dope it just looks like a music video performance it's perfect for me it's perfect i wish i had my slider yo a slider would go so crazy right here i ain't gonna obsess over it though it's cool it is what it is i gotta work with what i got let's uh let's get it kit put together oh man the fog is fading yo the fog is fading i gotta hurry up the fog is leaving bro that's not love what is what is what's wrong with you bro that's crazy that's whack yo the fog is gone bro that quick bro that fast that fast the fog left bro that is damn that's messed right. up so i got the rig built same rig r5c 24 millimeter sigma but all my fog is gone like literally all of it is left that's not love i don't know what that was that's messed up so now i'm kind of having a hard time framing this up to something that looks good it's just kind of flat i really wish i brought my um c stand because i had wanted to get some overhead shots but i don't got it with me so i gotta just kind of work with what i got try to fill out this location and make it look as cool as possible i think i got an angle it's okay i don't love it but we're gonna rock it out and see what we get on the other hand though My car looks cool back there. This might be the angle, actually. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is bright. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what I'm gonna try to do now is get like an up high looking down angle. I don't got my C-stand, but I'm gonna try it with this tripod because this tripod does get really high. So, let's see what we get. You ain't gonna believe this i mean you might believe it it's 70 degrees we went from a blizzard to 70 degrees and climbing today this is crazy i'm about to get these final shots for this video but i am excited i got basketball shorts on i mean i was gonna have basketball shorts on anyways just because it fit for the scene that i'm about to shoot but let's get into it i'm hyped the weather's good i don't even care how the bts look it might look like trash but we rock let's get it let's go what i'm doing right now is i'm mounting the r5c to uh this junior boom arm we got this on the grip head and then we got a spigot inside of the grip head and then we got uh a ball head inside uh on the end of the spigot 
complicated it might sound but it's actually a very simple concept so what i'm looking to get right now is i want to get shots of me playing basketball but i want them to be overhead shots just to get a unique perspective this is going to be hard for me to do because i left my ladder at my house it's right up the street but i don't think i'm gonna go up there and get it because i don't feel like it um i left my ladder at the crib which means i'm not really gonna have the ability to do adjustments on the camera when it's in the air so i might have to get an extremely high angle that is wider than i need it to be and then in post i can straighten it so the the composition and everything looks good also got to maneuver around the sun because we're not shooting at an optimal time right now we're not shooting at like sunset or sunrise or anything like that but it's cool we're gonna get the shots and uh it's gonna turn out dope so for starters first thing i need to do grab my basketball film this opening shot and then we're gonna shoot this way up in the air Get these shots going, let's get it. So I ended up switching over to the 16 to 35. I was shooting the vlog stuff on the 16 and 35 right here, but I put it on this camera because it's wider. I don't wanna jack this all the way up in the air. I ain't bring no sandbags. This does have a counterweight on the back of it right here, which I'll show you. This, that right there is a counterweight and it's pretty heavy, but I need something to ground this so it's not like super top heavy. So I don't wanna jack this all the way up in the air. I think this is like the limit of where I wanna take it. And uh, I mean, this is a cool height as well because I can actually reach the lens and do whatever adjustments I might need to do with focus. So um, I'm gonna fiddle around with this, roll it around, try to get it to uh, something that looks good, and then we gonna start. We gonna start rocking. part of the video you are the goat i appreciate you so much drop this down in the comment section below to let me know you made it here because this was a long one but it was a good one i enjoyed it um it's a couple things that i'm trying to work through with this format it's all experimentation at this point one thing the biggest thing for me is the audio you probably didn't notice but throughout the video the audio got progressively better so i think i've actually got it to a point where it sounds good to my own ears uh, so that's something that will be drastically improved in the future and I'm excited about. But I want to talk about my favorite shot of the video, my least favorite shot of the video. So my favorite shot of the video has to be this top down with the wet platform. Very simple shot, I know. But um, I just think it's fire. The texture on the ground in the background with the reflection is dope. And I know that if I had just got this shot set up a little bit faster, that fog, that haze that was on that platform would have made this shot so much freaking better, man. Close contender would have to be the shot of me sitting on the bench with uh, the trees framed up, great composition, the lake in the background, the reflections, everything about that shot looked dope too. But um, my least favorite shot of the video has to be the shots in the car. <laughs> it's wild because when I shot them, I was so hype about them, but that just goes to show that those are my first shots of the video. And uh, I think they fell a little bit flat. I wish I would have used the slider for them, but it's all good. We all learning and um, it's a process. It's a process, man. But look, this video inspired you at all. This video educated you at all. This video um, gave you a little bit of insight into the process. Please do me a solid. Go ahead and drop this video a like. Let me know that in the comment section. Maybe what was your favorite location? What was your favorite shot? What did you learn? most about this video what was the best insight out of the video i don't know do something do something for me bro some sort of engagement all right um i'm done yapping see you on the next video man peace i'm out deuces